Hey guys, welcome back to the CCC. You know, today in honor of this lovely weather that is in the forecast, in particular on the Louisiana region, Texas, Louisiana kind of border, as we tend to always get hit with bad weather down here, we figured we would pay homage. Go ahead and say it. Homage. Anyways, homage, homage, potato, potato, uh, to a classic New Orleans cocktail called the Sazerac. There's a lot to be said, as often there is with these drinks we make with different riffs and variations and history and mystery and what have you. But this one, the one thing I do find, though, many people claim that this is the original American cocktail. Oh, yeah? True story. However, there's one person in particular. I'm going blank. It's like Dave Wondrich. Is that his name? He's a, he's, he writes for Esquire. He's, big, he's a big imbiber. But he claims it's not. But everywhere else I've read that, they claim this is not the old-fashioned, this is sort of a cousin of the old-fashioned, is actually the original American cocktail. Well, that is interesting, because I always feel like this is sort of an old-fashioned, like a fancy old-fashioned, if you will, because yeah. of the absinthe. It's like an old-fashioned, kill the orange, add the lemon, add the absinthe, throw in rye, not bourbon. It, it's like fancy. Okay, we can go with fancy. It's like, if you like an old-fashioned, you will love a... Or, or you could say it's a, a slightly more sophisticated spin on it. Sure. It's from New Orleans. There's some history there. I don't know if you want to tie in some of the French, Creole, whatever you want to call it. But it's got, I think it's got a little more depth than just a regular old fashioned does. Yeah, agreed. Uh, also, I'm not aware, there probably is one. I can't think of a bar called the Old Fashioned, where there is a bar, famous bar in New Orleans called Sazerac Bar. Right. It's actually been in many movies. It's a famous bar in the uh, Hotel Roosevelt. Uh, also, there is a rye called Sazerac Rye. Hey, well, the interesting thing also, I think, about an old fashioned is almost everybody does an old fashioned with bourbon, like almost always. I think a Sazerac, one can go the, the traditional route, which I think is rye. An awful lot of recipes are also using uh, cognac, <laughs> either cognac instead of rye, or um, cognac in addition to rye like, you know, 50-50 yeah. or, yeah, you do want a really cold glass with this one. So you do want to pre-chill it while we, while you discuss or make your drink. Um, but if you are a fan of cognac, this is a really good place to put it in. There aren't a lot of cognac cocktails, really, like sidecar and nothing. Anyway, there's not a lot that you can do with cognac, but throw it in here, especially if the rye is a little too... Um, Spicy? Yeah, spicy or dry or, or um, just alcoholic-y for you. I think throwing in a little bit of, you know what, the more I'm thinking about it, well, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I sort of wish I had put in a little bit of cognac. Because I like cognac, actually. To add a little bit. Before we get too, too far into this topic of Sazerac and its importance and the lexicon of spirits and drinks and what have you, I think we need to uh, show everybody what we do with the absinthe. So, then... Whether you want to do an absinthe rinse, just pour it in there and leave it in the glass, or you have a fancy little spray like this guy or like that guy. So three or four sprays, you want to just sort of coat the glass. So what we're doing differently, guys, is whether you want to pre-chill it first or start it at this point, I think it's nice to pre-chill it, but then we're going to spray it and we're going to put some ice back in there to keep it cold. And also, if you have a rinse at this point, then the ice will also uh, melt with the absinthe and sort of help coat and rinse the glass. So we're going to go back and add some ice now. Get your mixing glass. If you don't have one, you can use a shaker as well, but with, this, but with a bar spoon. But the key is not to shake. Definitely no shaking. As well. This is one of the, I guess, probably the, the areas where people differ the most in terms of where we get our sweet from. So the class, classic recipe calls for just a white sugar cube like Ricey has there. I'm actually using a dark, dark brown sugar. These little guys are a little more rough for my sugar, just because I like to be a little different. I'm actually... Go, I mean, I put these out here so, you know, everyone can see, but I'm going to use my Turbinado Simple instead. Okay. Very, I think the taste will be very similar to what Jason is doing, but I don't know. I don't always love, I think the classic preparation is to do it that way. I think um, a lot of bars in, in the interest of time and efficiency will still use a Simple. And I, I actually like the way that the Simple will combine with the rest of the booze. And I like the viscosity that it'll, it'll add because, well, my, my Turbinado Simple is going to give it a little bit more viscosity, whereas that's going to give it a little bit more graininess. And I don't like grain. You stole my word. That, that's, that is the difference, really. 
because I do think ultimately this means a very similar flavor, flavor profile. For me, if I'm making a drink like this, especially if I'm not like hosting a party and there's 50 or I'm not working at a bar where I've got a line of 20 people waiting for drinks, this certainly takes more time, but I think that's sort of the fun of it. But yeah, half the recipes you'll look up will just call for simple syrup and it's, you get the same effect. Now, the real key to this one, this is a Peixos, which right, so you can show everyone the bottle. Okay, so this is not Angostura. This is not the one you're gonna see in most grocery stores, although it's probably the second most famous bitters out there next to Angostura. But this is sort of the key detail, one that you really will not see too many variations of in a, in a Sazerac. Um, there are some recipes out there that call for Peixos with a little bit of Angostura in addition, but at minimum, it really should have this, sort of this orangey, it's almost a Campari red orange. This is one of those ingredients, though, that without it, it's not a Sazerac. Like, you, you can do, you can sub in and sub out things all day long. Any sort of sweetener, it's still a Sazerac. Without Peixos, it's no longer a Sazerac. Yeah, and you'll see later on, we're using a different citrus than orange, so we're using lemon. But, yeah, so they're, they're, again, this is like a, a cousin to an old-fashioned, but a little twist. So, if you're using a sugar cube, white ground doesn't matter. Add your Peixos. Some recipes will call for a splash of water. The, the Peixos is not only adding flavor, but it's also adding a little bit of liquid to help break that up. Or of course, that's where the grain's gonna come from, the graininess. I didn't need to model mine because I didn't use the sugar. Yep, so you save a bar tool there. All right, and then two ounces of rye. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I mean, I really am actually wanting to try this cognac. So I'm actually, for funsicles, I'm gonna add half an ounce of cognac. Because really, who does not need more alcohol right now? I will say this is a negative not being able to do this together because I'd love to taste these two side by side. Totally. Yeah, second round. Anyways, let's add some ice. Okay, so amongst the many nuances of this drink that we're a little bit pickier about versus like, let's say, the classic cocktail that we're mixing that's got lots of citrus and whatnot, this particular guy is on the boozier side. So you'll notice Rice used a large rock. I'm using... It's actually an ice machine ice, but it's, they're about an inch and a quarter, so they're large size ice machine ice, if you will, and they're not going to dilute. So that's really the key here, is you're just trying to get it cold without diluting it. So again, stirring, not shaking, for about, let's say, 20 seconds, plus or minus. And then the other thing that's really unique about this, this drink, and really makes it different than an old-fashioned, is an old-fashioned is typically, of course, poured over a large rock, right? Or large, at least large ice, into an old-fashioned glass. And you guys are going to see in this drink, we're actually going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to take our pre chilled glass with absent, either a rinse or a spray. We're going to empty it out. So where you typically then go back with a large rock, we're actually going to keep it, we're going to actually serve this drink up, but in a chilled old-fashioned glass. And I got to tell you, I really enjoy drinking drinks up out of an old-fashioned glass. Yep. I know maybe that sounds counterintuitive. It just... It sits in my hand better. It's easier yeah. to drink out of than anything with the stem. I just, that this feels right to me, even though I do prefer drinks up. No, I hear you. I think it's a weight issue. I think it just feel, it feels just solid and it's a, uh, yeah. And also I think it, it, it's odd as it sounds, like you drink certain wines with a, you know, a larger goblet, a white wine, it's smaller, right? It has to do, it's almost like the weight and the, and sort of the, the texture of the drink, right? So this particular drink being a bit boozier, it feels like, it feels sort of scale appropriate with this type of glass. It almost yeah. feels like too much for a coupe glass. Right. But Although, truth be told, don't tell anyone, I would prefer to drink a Manhattan out of this any day. Hmm. I'll tell you, buddy. Other than the gazillion viewers we have. Um, as of last week, that's two gazillion. That's two. It's gone up. Okay. Well, welcome to the new gazillion that were added over the last week. All right. Grab a lemon. Again, Cousin or an old fashioned, not a, not a sibling. So using citrus for appeal, but not an orange. I was originally going to use my channel knife to make a lemon twist on this, but somehow that feels too- Too dainty? Dain dainty. That was exactly the word I was gonna use. Um, so I think, I think the white peeler is the way to go, for, yeah. in my opinion. I don't know that there's a right answer on that, but- No, I think, I think as long as it's fresh. This just feels a little bit more scale appropriate to me. Yeah. I expressed it. I wide peeled it, now I'm gonna drink it. So, I know we have a lot to say about this drink, but I think it's important, this is one that I do think really matter, like the details matter. Yes. You know, we, we often talk about, oh, well, you can do this riff on this, and this variation, and bring in whatever you want, bring in different herbs. This one is such a simple drink, but it can also be, I think, messed up pretty easily if you start bringing in another fruit, or you start, you, you try to shake this and pour it over rocks, it's very different than stirred in, a, in, in an old-fashioned glass. This is definitely a drink if, if and when you ever go out again. I would not recommend ordering this in a 
crappy bar. No. This is one when you, the bartender has some time to give you some attention and you know you're gonna get a, a proper drink. This is, this is definitely a good, uh, a good drink to get at that kind of bar. Yeah, well you said. Know, not a hotel bar during you know, happy hour. Unless you're at the Roosevelt Hotel in the Sazerac Bar. It's actually a really neat bar. They, they do like table service. Like you can order at the bar, but it's all about like the service there that, you know, the bartenders still wear like, are dressed like they would in the 1920s or 30s. It's very formal. It's cool. Very cool. So if you ever make it to New Orleans after this week, go to the Roosevelt Hotel. You can actually eat at Dominica, great restaurant, and go to Sazerac Bar to get a Sazerac. There you go. There's my public service for New Orleans. We'll see you guys Thursday. Public service for Houston. Stay safe. Stay dry. Stay hydrated. Stay lubricated. Same. Cheers, Rice. Cheers, Jason. <laughs>